I know we are about to see curriculum picks and curriculum pick videos and um, I definitely have to say um, I'm not ready. Hi you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, I am just going to do a old school homeschooling update video for you guys. We're really going to recap my January and February months since I since I really haven't like come on here and share with you guys some of our homeschooling updates and things that has happened for us. And the past couple of months so we're just gonna chit chat it up again um i just want to say you guys before i really get into this update for january i really want to thank all of you guys for all of your encouraging words your emails all of the messages that you've sent me uh after i post my last video of just sharing with you guys uh some homeschooling struggles that i really have been facing over the years that i have been homeschooling and i'm so grateful i'm so grateful for this community and for all of you guys that have reached out to me your words your messages your emails they really meant so much uh, it really uh, motivated me to just continue on uh, this journey and just to push forward and I'm really really grateful for all of these connections that I have met online with you guys and um, yeah I you guys like I really don't have the words again I just want to say thank you so much just for for everything all of those kind words they really really meant so much to me um, these past couple of months, you guys, they really have been challenging for me. Um, just because uh, in the month of January, you guys, I started potty training my three-year-old, uh, Alana, who is my three-year-old. She turned three on January 2nd, and I really felt the pressure uh, to really start potty training, you know, after she hits that point. It's like, okay, here we go. And um, potty training and homeschooling, you guys, is like no joke. If you guys have done it, you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, so it definitely has been challenging especially in January uh, getting her to go to the potty and still homeschool and I have two other kids that need me and it definitely was crazy it was messy but um, hopefully we are at home stretch when it comes to like the potty training and things like that uh, she's getting it and you know I'm so grateful uh, that we're kind of like over this little beginning hump of like potty training and things like that um, as far as me you guys uh, I have been doing my best to take better care of myself these past couple of months um it really has been hard putting myself you know forward and taking care of myself and prioritizing myself uh, over everyone else's needs and my family um, I don't know what it is about you know moms we feel like we're being selfish when we take out that time to take care of ourselves but um, I definitely notice a difference in me really taking better care of myself and my overall health um, and hopefully I can continue to prioritize uh, doing those things that I need to to continue to up lift my spirit and to take care of me uh, so I can so I can continue to like feed my family and give them the things that they need uh, because I'm you know spiritually emotionally physically I have met all of the needs that I need so um, I'm still working on that you guys I haven't gotten it all together but I definitely know uh, those were some of the things that I really was prioritizing in the month of January and February uh, now you guys let's go ahead and get into the books so uh, we have have really enjoyed our read aloud this past month which was Planet Earth is Blue. This was a great book about a young girl who was autistic and it really put us in her brain and her viewpoint of how everyone around her viewed her and viewed her disability and viewed her difference and this was a great and great I mean <laughs> you guys like I'm already fumbling over my words but what I'm trying to say this is a great read about understanding uh, a perspective of someone who has a difference who has a disability uh, I definitely will say this is not an elementary read this is definitely a middle grade read because of the topics you will be uh, talking about as you, we read these chapters I really loved uh, hearing Nova speak and it was so great it was so great so powerful so many great discussions me and Brielle had over this book it did have a sad ending you guys um, but Brielle overall said she really enjoyed this it went it correlated really perfectly with our um, science unit because we have been studying space because Nova uh, she has this like dream to be the first autistic person in space and uh, 
uh, they really followed the space timeline in talking about all the different events that happen um, in space. So it was so amazing uh, having this read aloud while we did science. They matched perfectly together. Uh, but this was a great, great, great story. I definitely would recommend it, but especially for middle grade uh, readers. Now, as far as our last read aloud that we're going to do in our homeschooling year, um, this year I did have us plan to do 10 read alouds. Uh, it didn't quite happen. So I think I'm going to have us only do five read alouds for this homeschooling year because we have been reading a lot through um, history. And I really don't want to put that much pressure on ourselves to, you know, just read um, so many read alouds, especially since we're doing so much in our literature based history studies. So our last read aloud that we're going to be reading this homeschooling year is going to be Ancestor Approved. Brielle picked this out or picked this one out and I'm really really excited to read this one um it looks really really fun we're going to listen to this on audible because audible has really been saving me you guys it's been saving my voice especially since we've been doing like a lot of history reading um I really love taking that pressure off of myself especially during lunchtime and uh, we just listen to a book and then we can talk about it after we hear the chapter so we're definitely going to use audible again for ancestor approved now some of the books that Brielle has been reading her fun reader she read this month was uh operation sisterhood this was a great one because this actually is about a group of homeschooling kiddos and she really really enjoyed this one i really have to get brielle back here with us you guys uh for her to give her like book reviews at the end of the year of like her independent fun readers because she told me she read some really really great ones and i definitely want to give you guys some inspiration as you're picking out some uh fun readers for your kiddos especially middle grade readers i feel like we don't see that many videos on YouTube about like the middle grade ages when it comes to like good uh, readings. So um, she definitely enjoyed Operation Sisterhood. Now, as far as like her independent assigned readers, um, I started off Brielle on the American Girl series. So she's actually reading um, both the Addie series and the Meet Felicity series because these actually match up in the time periods that we are in both of our history curriculums. So in A River of Voices, we are in that like colonial age or that colonial time period. So that's why she is reading uh, the Meet Felicity American Girl uh, historical fiction series. And then for our heart and soul we're in that uh civil war reconstruction period and she is reading meet addy which is a great 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 um american girl series to read during that uh time period so she's really enjoying these and i don't really feel like these feel like assigned readers to her uh, just because she is really enjoying them and it's kind of nostalgic because i read these series growing up and i'm so happy to be able to like share in some memories with uh brielle as she is uh picking up the american girl series and um they're really, really Really fun um so that is like some of our reads and our read alouds now as far as our heart and soul african-american history you guys like the the picture books that we have been reading just overall has been amazing i'm just going to share with you guys the titles because i definitely want to make a book review of all of the books that we've read especially ones that we um highlighted because all of the picture books we've read this year uh through heart and soul and a river of voices have been so much fun and the chapter books as well i don't think we really had a bad historical fiction book this homeschooling year which is you know pretty odd but um this book that we read was Crossing Bachito, which is, was a great tour, a story about um, how the Choctaw Indians were actually helping enslaved African-Americans to their freedom by crossing the Mississippi River. So this was a great one. We also read uh, John Roy Lynch, which was Slave to Congressman, which, a great, which was a great um, picture book as well. We read I Have Heard of a Land, which actually is about African-American pioneers in the Oklahoma Territory. Another great picture book. And the last picture book that we've read uh, in the past couple of months has been Bass Reads, U.S. Marshall. Uh, this was a great story about Bass Reads because you guys, he he actually uh, was a slave and uh, during the Reconstruction era, he became free and then he became a U.S. Deputy Marshal and he didn't know how to read and write. So all of the people he had to find and hunt down as a bounty hunter, he memorized all of like their descriptions and things like that. And all of it was in his head by his memory. And it was so amazing just uh, hearing his story, reading about his life. So we really enjoyed all the picture books we read uh, over the past couple of months in Heart and soul and our historical fictions we've been reading as well. 
Now, you guys, let's go ahead and get into our um, my, uh, I guess, curriculum update because I do like to share with you guys uh, what's going on as far as like our curriculum, any changes or anything like that. So um, the biggest change, as you guys have seen in my previous videos, was that we switched from Saxon to uh, Math UC Epsilon. And you guys, it's been going so great. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I am not one to... <laughs> to condone or to say, you know, just switch curriculum like nilly willy because definitely when making curriculum switches, especially when it comes to math, uh, I feel like you really have to think those out. Um, and I'm so happy I made this switch for Brielle, even though I was very hesitant to make this switch with her uh, mid-year. But math, you see, has definitely been a better fit for her. In particular, I'm noticing her confidence in math has definitely increased her understanding in math has definitely increased and I really feel like um, a mastery approach for her and mathematics actually was better than a spiral approach. Um, I do have my video coming out soon about my either it's going to come out before this one or after I'm not too sure but I did make a comparison video between Math UC and Saxon and in that video I just explained to you guys like both of these curriculums Math UC and Saxon are very very strong. I really feel like it just depends on your kiddos and your kiddos needs and Math UC has definitely uh, fit Brielle's needs much better than Saxon but overall both of those programs are great I stand behind both of them and um Matthew C just has just been sticking with her you guys and I'm so happy uh to really uh to to my surprise um we are actually almost at the halfway point of Matthew C. Epsilon. It has 30 lessons, you guys, and we are starting lesson 14 this week. And we've only been working through Epsilon for about, I think, six weeks now. So it's so crazy, like, um, the pace at which Brielle is going in this. And I wasn't surprised because I know since she's coming from Saxon, Saxon was a spiral. Some of the concepts in here, she was just really touching on to understand it in a different way. Uh, but it's really clicking and resonating with her. So um, I definitely see us finishing off Epsilon uh, by the end of our school year. And if we get into Zeta before the end of our school year, that's fine. If not, I definitely will be happy just to finish off this level. And then for us to go into Zeta, which is the decimals and percentages um, after we finish this one. So overall, I'm definitely happy with our math switch, even though it was scary. Um, as far as our other subjects, you guys, I definitely can say in our homeschool overall this homeschooling year I really feel like my strengths or our strengths has been um, definitely um, math has been a strength even though we made a curriculum switch writing has been a strength uh, we've been using IEW guys and right now we are about to start week 18 of IEW so we only have about six more weeks till we complete uh, the IEW structure and style level 1a and overall Brielle has done so great with it um, it is a rigid program um, um, I really didn't realize how uh, time consuming it was going to be for Brielle to uh, write these papers, but I definitely have seen like growth in her writing skills overall. Um, it's so crazy how I have read her first paper. And then I read her like last paper that she wrote and the difference is like mind blowing. So I definitely know the structure is needed when you are writing like more like research papers and things like that. But I will say this, um, when I do make my end of the year review on IEW, I'm going to be honest. I really feel like IEW, they don't really teach the kiddos about having their own voice and that's one thing i can say it's lacking is that while they do teach the kiddos how to structure and the form those papers um it lacks teaching kiddos how to use their own voice in their writing um and that's one aspect of it i definitely will say that iew is missing but overall it gets the job done and i'm really really happy in seeing the growth of her writing but i definitely know she hasn't necessarily learned about her voice in her writing through IEW. She actually has learned about that through doing creative writing and other writing exercises we've done in the past. So um, that's my thoughts about it. Again, I will give like a final overview about IEW, but overall it's going great. Um, so I'll say, like I said, math, history, writing's been going good this homeschooling year. Um, our subject we really have been lacking in this homeschooling year has definitely been science, you guys. I really have been dropping the ball this year on science. Um, we are actually just wrapping up our space unit that we did with science, and I really, really enjoyed it. We started off our homeschooling year using God's design, Heaven for Earth. 
God's Design, Heaven and Earth, uh, which is a great uh, science curriculum, but I was just finding that I was not picking it up, you guys. And um, I was really just letting science fall back on the back burner. So what I ended up doing was I ended up like piecing together a science unit for Brielle by using our DK encyclopedia and just having her finish out this science unit, doing it pretty independently uh, where she used uh, her DK encyclopedia. I picked out a lot of National Geographic videos that she uh, watched. We used a lot of Teachers Pay Teachers and she uh, finished out her um, science notebook and she did an awesome job on her school nest or inside of her school nest science notebook. This right here is the last page that she did which is the space exploration timeline where she went over uh, just uh, the timeline of space and exploration and uh, all the advancements that we've made uh, in space from the beginning to uh, now. So she really, really enjoyed using her uh, school nest notebook, uh, really enjoying all the teachers pay teachers uh, printables that I found off for her just so she can kind of finish off that space unit and she can work on it uh, independently. Um, especially since the potty training, you guys, like that has definitely taken up a lot of my time. So I didn't really want Bria to lack in science. So I really set up that mode for her to do it independently. Now for the rest of our school year, you guys, I went ahead and I purchased this 180 days of science for her. Uh, so she can kind of work throughout this workbook, especially on the days where um, I don't necessarily have anything scheduled for her to do in science for us to do together, I should say. And I still want her to touch up upon uh, different science subjects. Um, this is just the area that I feel like I'm lacking and I feel like by adding in this workbook it's really allowing us to still touch on science even though it's not my ideal way to do science. Um, I feel like at least we're touching on it. She's uh, still learning new things. It's just in a more simple way and um, yeah I definitely know over the summer I'm going to do something in science and knowing that this school year um, we didn't do as much in science. So um, like I said we are finishing out our um, space unit. This is our last week that we are finishing it out. Um, the only thing we're going to do is Brielle, she wanted to do like a 3D space model. So she's going to be working on like a little project as far as that goes. And we're going to read Hidden Figures and we're going to watch the movie Hidden Figures. So that's like the last thing that we're going to do for to like finally conclude our space unit. And then after that, like I said, I think I'm just going to work through our 180 days of science and I might find a couple of units for us to do to end off the school year. It just depends. But this is going to be uh, the main thing I'm going to focus on. Um, like I said, I know it's not ideal, but um, at least she's still getting in um, science. Now, you guys, um, I know we are about to see curriculum picks and curriculum pick videos. And um, I definitely have to say um, I'm not ready. It's so crazy because this time last year, I actually was posting my curriculum picks for uh, all of my kiddos and I was ready and I had a plan, but I really feel like this year, um, overall, I'm taking a big step back and um, my two words for my upcoming homeschool year is actually simplify and connect. And I really want to focus on those two words when I'm making my final selections for my curriculum picks for my kiddos. Now, I will say for uh, Leia, who is my upcoming kindergartner, um, I already have her stuff picked out. I kind of already know the direction that I want to go for her. It's really Brielle that I'm really struggling with where I want to go in the direction. I have some ideas. Um, I have, I think, a plan, but I'm kind of like going back and forth with it. Um, I know for her, uh, independence is definitely like on the top of my priority. Right now, she's working pretty independently. Other than history and read aloud, she's doing all of her work uh, by herself. I'm just kind of coming in as facilitator and grader for her. So I definitely am looking for more of that independent uh, structure for her so she can continue to um, work independently and gain that confidence as you know a lifelong learner I definitely want to find something that I can stick with just because I mean I am entering officially into middle school for her and I want to be consistent because at the end of the day you guys I'm going to be honest like I really don't know if I'm going to homeschool Brielle all the way through high school. And I really want to leave that option open just in case I decide to put her 
just in case I decide to put her into some form of public school for high school and I don't want to I don't want her to be behind uh her other classmates in going back into that structure of public school so I definitely know these next three years um I am going to be following closely you know like my state standards and things like that um in my homeschool especially for her because I really don't know what direction I am going to go with her in the future uh just to be honest um um, I am just taking it year by year with her um, but I do want to leave that option open um, so those are like some of the criterias I think I want to do like a brain dump with you guys I've been seeing a few videos on YouTube where people have been doing like brain dumps of like their curriculum plans and the things that they have planned for their upcoming year and I think I do want to make a brain dump just to kind of get all of the ideas and the things out of my head you know and uh put it down somewhere just so i can kind of like really narrow it down um i just want to let you guys know um please don't get discouraged and don't get overwhelmed as you will start seeing you know curriculum videos i'm going to do my best to like filter through them because i know i'm going to see them and uh it's definitely going to be a trend in the homeschool community i'm not too sure where that trend is going to be but at the end of the day, when it's coming to you guys picking out your curriculum picks for next year, uh, my main advice I definitely would say is stay true to yourself in your homeschool. Uh, don't worry if your homeschool looks a little bit different than others. Uh, don't get the FOMO. Don't uh, feel like your homeschooling curriculum that you chose is inadequate uh, compared to others. You know you and your kiddos best. And uh, that's definitely the best advice I will say is, you know, at this time, you know, you may want to like keep your head down and just focus on you and your kiddos and uh, just use the curriculum picks that we will be seeing just as, you know, resource entertainment, but not necessarily uh, making yourself become bound uh, by someone else's opinions in their homeschool and the things that they're going to be doing uh, for the upcoming homeschooling year, if that makes any sense. So you guys, uh, pretty much this is like my homeschooling update. Nothing really much has changed here. Um, we're just kind of like taking it day by day. Um, the main things that I do want to work on uh, this upcoming month is really with my younger two, especially my four-year-old, you guys. Um, I definitely have gotten off track with her as far as like her homeschool. She has definitely become very resistant in wanting to do homeschool. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't posted like my um, pre-K homeschooling routine because right now she doesn't have a routine so my goals uh, for this upcoming month is really to kind of get Leia back into a swing of school and a swing of things uh, we really have been focusing a lot on speech therapy and we've been reading a lot with my uh, four-year-old, but um, I do want to get her back into doing her uh, math consistently, her handwriting and her phonics instructions consistently at least three times out the week that I, um, three times out the week. That was like our um, original thing that we were doing with her because that fourth day was focused on speech for her. Uh, so those are like my goals for this upcoming month, uh, just to kind of finish out some of the curriculum uh, that we're using and just kind of like stay clear um, on the road to finishing out this homeschooling year strong and not necessarily for me to get distracted by my next homeschooling year is my goals. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed like chatting with me and us like talking and kind of catching up and everything like that um i know it was kind of all over the place but i love making these videos for you guys so as always i look forward to seeing you guys in my next video thank you guys so much and i'll talk to you later bye